Lock in all sports, all plays, all 5% best bets for the next 30 days from your favorite Wager Talk handicapper for only $199 versus the regular price of $349 for a total savings of $150. Prices are already discounted across the board and no coupon is required. Just head over to wagertalk.com, pick your favorite handicapper in the experts menu, and lock them in for 30 days across all sports for only $199. Welcome back, guys, here to Wager Talk TV. This is Puck Time right here for the Wednesday slate. I'm your host, Andrew McGinnis, as usual, joined by Carmine Bianco. And the Prez joins us here for his usual Wednesday spot, guys. On Mondays, plays are $9. On Tuesdays, one play is $2 at the site. Today, well, today is Wednesday. But Prez, congratulations on cashing your $2 Tuesday play. And my $5 play and every other play that I've released pretty much in the last uh, month. But I appreciate it. And I, uh, you know, I'm thrilled to be on the show, Andrew. You and Karm have uh, turned this into uh, the number one viewed show. And uh, it's a privilege to wake up and hang out with the two of you bums. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what a compliment. What a compliment. Love starting my day with you guys as well. Karm, what's up with you, man? Not much. <laughs> it's uh, it, we have the master on the show. What can I uh, what can I tell you, man? The guy is on an absolutely insane uh, run not. Uh, on the ice. So we, we got to give him accolades for that uh, uh, and, and just hope that he continues it right through the playoffs and to the Stanley Cup finals. Um, everything's good, Andrew. Uh, I was actually just talking to someone on uh, Twitter about puck luck. Uh, March has been a really good month for me, puck luck wise. It wasn't there last night. The abs blew a third period lead, uh, two goal lead in yeah. the third period. And then the Panthers took a stupid penalty with two minutes left, which kind of ruled out the, uh, possible empty net goal just to get a push there. And sometimes those pushes will save you money. Uh, the only good note yesterday um, I will I'm... say is, is the look ahead team, uh, the Chicago Blackhawks got a big win over those Panthers and they still have six, seven games. I talked about that eight-game stretch that they have, uh, with seven of them at home, and they've got that first win. They play the Panthers, and they can very well beat the Panthers again. Six of seven games. These are big games for the Chicago team if they want to try and get into the playoffs in that fourth spot. So uh, good on those Hawks. I make fun of them, but good on those Hawks, man. Uh, they looked good last night. Definitely. They can't just beat the bad teams in the division. They have to be able to beat the top teams, not just every now and then, but consistently – uh, in order to make the playoffs, but also to get some respect in that division as well. If we're going to do a little bit of complaining here, Karm, I'll do my little two cents complaining. I had the under in the Devils and Flyers game yesterday. I believe that had no no business uh, going under after the first period was pretty crowded with goals. And it really, really calmed down that third period, last few minutes. Uh, we just saw some uncalled for goals. I think it was like last, what, 30 or 40 seconds that total goes over. So that was kind of tough to watch. That's the worst part about betting unders uh, in the NHL, guys. But on to today, we're talking Kings, Sharks, Jets, Canucks, Ducks, Wild, Sens, and Flames, and the wonderful Sabres try and get a win after 14 games against the Penguins. And, guys, we're going to start with the Kings and the Sharks. And I'll, I'll just say this. You know, we're seeing practically a pick em here between these two teams. Uh, we're seeing a Kings team that is struggling on the road. One in seven, their last eight games on the road. We've discussed a lot of these splits right now with teams, with goaltenders, home versus uh, away. And I feel like it's been a factor for these teams, especially the, the bottom tier teams like the Kings, like the Sharks per se. But guys, I'll say this. I believe that the Kings have overachieved and the Sharks have underachieved and they have practically the same record. So I like the Sharks here at minus 115. What about you, Carm? Yeah, no, listen, the Sharks, uh, they, they started the season with that uh, 12 or 13 game uh, road trip. Uh, they've, they've only played, I think, 12 games at home uh, thus far in the season. But listen, I, I just don't think this is a team that's going to make the playoffs. Maybe Prez has something different to say on, on this. Uh, as far as the Kings go, uh, I was talking about the Sharks, but as far as the Kings go, they've been generating a, a ton of shots on net in their games. They're getting the opportunities. They're a very good skating team. We saw it against the Vegas Golden Knights, and then uh, they outshot uh, the Sharks 42 to 23 in that 2 1 loss. It, it was tied at one, heading to the third. Sharks won in the third. Keep generating the chances. They're going to score the goals. 
I'm listen, I, listen, they have a legitimate shot, this Kings team, if they can string wins together. And it's a tough thing to say in this uh, in this new season of, of the teams that are sort of the bottom four stringing wins together. But if they can string wins together, they have a legitimate shot with St. Louis struggling of getting into the playoffs or, or at least battling for that fourth spot. So Kings for me tonight. All right. Uh, we've pretty much been on this show for six minutes and 29 seconds now. And Carmine and I are already head to head. Uh, Prez, what about you? Break the tie here. Well, Andrew, I can't break the tie because I like the total, but I will say this. I do like your point about, and I agree with your point about the Kings overachieving and the Sharks underachieving. I think ultimately if these guys played 10 games, uh, I think the Sharks would probably get six of them, but it's very, very close. And we don't know ultimately if the Kings are overachieving. You know, they're getting decent goaltending this year. Uh, Kopitar scoring. Uh, but when I look at this game, I look at the under. The Kings are still one more game to the over. But is this Kings team a real over team? Are they going to end the year in the positive on the over? I say hell no. Uh, this Kings team has gone under the total five of their last six games. Uh, San Jose is now trending to the under one, two, three, four, four of their last six uh, we saw a 2-1 game last time. Um, and I think for the Kings, as Carm says, for the Kings to get into the playoffs, uh, they're going to really need to play to the under almost every night. I don't think this team over the long run is going to be able to score with everybody or almost anybody. Uh, if I'm, I got the five and a half here, and uh, there's simply no reason not to take the under. It's probably one of my... Uh, stronger plays of the day i'm right there with you prez it seems like any game that's been high scoring for these teams has just been an absolute disaster it's been a mess it's been sloppy hockey and not what these two teams want to play speaking of totals here the jets uh, have gone over in seven of their last 10 games but for right now in the nhl unders are completely dominating it's, it's it hasn't even been close um if you're yeah. an over better you're very frustrated right now uh, but the Jets, they bounce back and win that last one against the Canucks 4-0. Uh, all year long, the Jets were a great, teams, a great team to bet on off a loss. They actually lost two in a row, came back and won this one 4-0 here. But the Canucks, they've completely <laughs> gone with Thatcher Demko. Um, you know, I, I kind of said I felt bad for Braden Holtby. But I said at the beginning of the year, I did not think that the chain, change of scenery from Washington to Vancouver – would mean too much for this guy. Um, I, I didn't think he was playing good hockey in Washington, and it's proven he wasn't playing good hockey in Vancouver. Thatcher Demko has been very, very good uh, for the Vancouver Canucks. And, you know, although that trend to the over has been so strong for the Jets in that North Division, I'm going right back to the under here in this game, guys. And the reason yeah. being is that I believe the Canucks, they've, I, I don't know if it was Carm or, or who might have said it. Uh, I can't remember who said this, but, a point was raised to me about how when you're more comfortable and you have a better goaltender there, you're more relaxed, you trust your guy behind you, uh, you know you don't have to take as many risks. And I've noticed this Canucks team not taking as many risks, protecting the puck, spending more time in the offensive zone, dumping the puck in, so on and so forth. I like the under here, guys, but I also do like the Canucks here at a short dog price. What are your thoughts, Prez? Uh, Andrew, I think you're dead on with the under. Um, and I like the Canucks as well here. Um, look, the Canucks have been playing much better. You go down the, the list. Uh, this team has won seven of their last 10 games. One of their losses was in a shootout to Montreal. Uh, they're playing stone cold to the under eight, one and one in their last 10 games to the under Demko's playing outstanding. They're really bottling up, uh, the offensive zone uh, for the other team and really not giving a lot of space. This team is super fast. You know, Winnipeg, I mean, Winnipeg really hasn't uh, played great of late. Um, they did win their last game. And, you know, I've been pretty true to the zigzag theory for a lot of these teams that I think are close to even. I do think Winnipeg is a better team than Vancouver. 
But given that Calgary looks like they might never win a game, uh, Vancouver is my only hope for the Habs to not make the playoffs. So go Canucks. <laughs> I like and the from, I like the under and I like Vancouver. All right, Prez and I are on the same page in that one. And I was going to just say, but Andrew, last year playoffs, Andrew, really quick, Andrew, yeah. really quick. The Habs are going to make the playoffs, which sick makes me sick. But it, they're going to back them. They're they're going to back into the damn playoffs because Calgary and Vancouver just freaking suck. I'm so disappointed. Well, if we can get rid of the three-on-three three overtime, they would be a lot better in the standings, that's for sure. And I, that's not an excuse. That's actually bashing on my own team not getting the job done. But I also don't like the rules of that. But I was going to say, Carm, uh, this Canucks team, people said, could Thatcher Demko continue that success into the next season? Every playoffs, we see a hot goaltender get going. How do you feel about how he's playing right now? Obviously, he is you know, the backbone of this team. Well, first of all, if you had under under 11 and a half minutes before the Prez makes fun of the Montreal Canadiens on this show, you can cash that ticket because it was 11 minutes and 10 seconds. So you're good there. Uh, on Monday's show, uh, to your point of Demko, I talked about Demko and, and Helen Buck uh, when we previewed this game. I said I liked the under. And uh, it, this was a dead under the whole way. Uh, forget about the final scoreline of, of 4 nothing. I talked about the fact that Demko in nine of his last 10 games, had allowed two or less goals. Yes, he allowed four, but listen, it was one nothing heading to the third. He didn't get a lot of help late in that third period where, you know, they sort of iced that game away. And I talked about Hellenbuck in that, you know, while he allowed three or more goals in his last eight games and in 13 of his last 14 games, he was going to be better. Yeah, you could tell, you know, this just was a, a, a Winnipeg team that was struggling. They played extremely well. Vancouver's learning to win these 3-2 games. Uh, it's it's how they're going to get into the playoffs. They're not going to win high-scoring games. You can't get into those. Uh, protect your goalie, and that's what they've been doing with Demko. Uh, we're going to see uh, – I, I can't see the coaches uh, giving us any surprise tonight as far as the goalies go. It has to be Demko and Hellenbuck because the Canucks are off for a week after this game. Uh, Winnipeg plays the Flames on Friday and Saturday in back-to-backs. So we'll see Hellenbuck in that game on Friday, and then we'll see – Broussard in the game on Saturday. That's when they play the Flames. So it'll be same goalies in tonight, and it's, I think it's going to be the same result. Give me the under here. Yeah, Under from Carm. Under across the board for the three of us and the Canucks and the Jets. Let's get into uh, some wild action here. I know we have at least one wild fan in the chat room, as usual here. The Ducks and the Wild go head-to-head. And here's what I'll say about this one. Uh, of course, we see the uh, number move from minus 235 to minus 260. So either way, it was a huge favorite. Uh, now an even bigger favorite. But guys, the betting markets gave respect to the Minnesota Wild. But a lot of people say that, and I'm sure, I think, Prez, you've had guests on your show that have said this. So please correct me if I'm wrong uh, when I go to you. But the NHL markets seem to take a little bit longer to adjust. And that's what happened with the Minnesota Wild. You know, Carmen and I were saying that, they were getting such great prices during this unbelievable run. And I believe Karn was backing them earlier than me. Then I started backing them as well. And then they ran into this patch where they were playing a bunch of games against Arizona. And then they ran into Colorado. And that was actually one of Prez's 5% plays where back-to-back games, Colorado handed Minnesota Wild, you know, a, a can of whoop-ass. I mean, there's no other, no other expression for me to use, really. Uh, it was 6 nothing. And 5-1. This next game against the Anaheim Ducks, I thought they would go out there and be angry, uh, fast. The, they would fill the, the net with pucks, and they didn't really do that. It was a low-scoring game. It was the kind of game the Anaheim Ducks would like to play in. Final score was 2-1. Why do I say this? Because I believe that that wasn't even the best effort from the Wild, although they won 2-1 here. I like their team total. I like the Minnesota Wild on the puck line, and uh, I've already played a parlay, actually, two-teamer, Wild and Flames, but we'll get into that uh, Flames game a little bit later on here, guys. But, Carm, your thoughts here? Yeah, listen, uh, they ran into the offensive juggernaut that is the Colorado Avs right now, so, you know, I I talked about it. You know, I I like Minnesota uh, coming out of that COVID break where they lost the game. I said they're going to put a run together. They put the run together. I'm not always right on these, but I said Colorado was about to put a run together. They put their run together, and hopefully it happens with Chicago. But 
listen, all is right with the Wild. Uh, they're a very good team. I, I like the way they play. Um, as far as sides here goes, I'm not going to touch the sides just because of the price. I'm going to go to the under. Listen, they've they played the uh, they've they've won four or five games. Four four of the five games have gone under the total. Miller's been in net for two of those games uh, for Anaheim. He'll be in net tonight. You know, uh, both those games went under with Miller in net. He stopped four, uh, 50 of 55 shots, so he's faced a lot of pucks in those games. And then you look at uh, Kakinen. The guy has been absolutely fantastic. Prior to that loss against Colorado, uh, that 6 nothing loss, the guy had won nine straight games, allowing 13 goals. That's absolutely insane. Versus Anaheim, he's 3-0, and allowing only four goals over three games. For me, uh, it's a dead under here, under 5.5. Well, under seems to be the theme of the show here so far today. It's the theme of the past three, four weeks uh, in the NHL press. First of all, before you get your analysis, do you agree with what I said there about the betting markets taking a little bit longer to catch up with NHL betting? You know, I, I mean, I, Andrew, I don't really notice that kind of stuff. You know, like, especially with the NHL, I, I'm so in a silo. You know, I, I just, I'm so focused on trying to find the rhythm. And if I could just go slightly off topic for a second, and I think an interesting topic you know, I've got I've got two daughters. Both of them are betting. Uh, my a woman, Vivian, is betting. And I'm kind of seeing firsthand the mindset of, quote-unquote, not professional betters. Last night, they're, Florida. Florida, Dad, Florida is better than Chicago. I'm taking Florida. Dad, Colorado is better than Arizona. I'm taking Colorado. You know, Andrew, for me... Winning and losing is about finding the right spots to bet teams. And that's why I'm not focused on whether the market is taking a long time to catch up or not to catch up. I'm literally looking at the at wh where the right spots are to bet. And I like to bet good teams. So if you're one of my clients, you, you, you notice I'm betting Colorado. I'm betting Vegas. I'm betting all of these good teams, but why didn't I bet Colorado last night? Why didn't I bet Florida last night? We have to find the right spots. So I, I don't know if the markets are taking uh, too long to catch up. I mean, we, we thought we were going to see sevens on the board. The markets didn't put any sevens on the board, and now I'm surprised there aren't threes on the board. So, you know... <laughs> It, that's something that I just am not focused on. But if I can talk Chris, about that, the Minnesota that might have been game. that might have been the best speech you've had all year long. That is just that is just wise. That, you are very. That is just a top notch segment there. I mean, wow, wow. You know, you just. I mean, you're gonna have Carm, to put is that he mocking book. me? You're gonna have to put that I'm in your book. Actually, I'm not sure like, if he is. Was, it's it's the genius. It's the genius that is Andrew McInnes. If he's mocking you in such a way that he's make he's propping you up, and then it's like good to me. He just knocks you. But it's so me. funny, Andrew. I mean, that whole topic is so interesting because it's like I hated Florida last night. Why didn't I release the Blackhawks? This is a, a very important statement. I'm not looking to find plus 160s or plus 200s in the right spots. If if when Florida played Chicago last night, I hated Florida, but I wouldn't play Chicago. You know, I and, hated and Chris, Colorado record, last record, night, but I wouldn't, the, yeah. The reason why I like that so much, what you just said, obviously I, I agree with a lot of stuff you just said, and it's cool because it dictates to the way that you handicap. And I've learned that yeah. obviously through messaging you. I've learned how you handicap, but it also is impressive to me. And for all of our viewers, you didn't have that plan to say on the show and they might think that you did, but I know that you just said that off the top of your head and just illustrated what you've seen from your family and from people out there. So that's to me, what's impressive by that. And, and to show your betting strategy versus to quote for quote, the public in your house, it's cool to hear. Yeah, and it's interesting. And, you know, Brian Leonard uses a very different strategy. He's also looking for spots, too. He's just looking for those dogs to bet in their right spots. I'm looking for the favorites to bet in their right spots. <coughs> so Sorry. who are you looking for here, Prez? 
Who are you looking for? Minnesota. This, uh, this So <laughs> I was on Minnesota as a 5% play on, Mon- on Monday. I lo- absolutely lost my crap, especially with the penalty at the end of the game. But, you know, Carr made an interesting point by text, and that is, you know, basically once Minnesota g- goes up, uh, Anaheim's just going to turtle. I think the same thing tonight. Guys, I, I write an NHL power poll now. You can find it under the news button at wagertalk.com. I have Minnesota as the ninth best team in the league. I think this Minnesota team is a really good team. But when you read my power poll write up, it says the same thing that Carm was talking about and that although Minnesota is a really good team, they're not good enough to play against the Avs. I would say they're not good enough to play against Vegas yet, but they did take two from Vegas recently. But I think Minnesota is a year away from making that next step. Um, With that said, Anaheim is a a disaster team. Um, I can't take minus two whatever in this game, uh, and I can't count on Minnesota to win by two. So I am going with a Stone cold under in this game as well. Uh, Carm likes the under. I like the under where where every game seems to be an under. And I just want to say something quickly, and I know I'm talking a lot. The reason there's so many unders now versus so many overs at the beginning of the season is as teams play each other more and more and more, the adjustments that are made are always defensive adjustments. Teams are always trying to figure out how to stop the opposing team. They're not trying to figure out how to create the flying V that nobody has seen in the NHL uh, and score. So that's why the shift has happened. And I think we're going to see even more unders moving forward as that trend continues. I like Minnesota in regulation, and I like the under. Lawrence, I don't think uh, Andrew knows what the flying V is. That movie came out before he was born. I do. Do you? Oh, okay. and, and just for the record, yeah. Carm, just for the record, it was actually tried in an NHL game. I don't know if you guys know that. <laughs> it's on YouTube. I've actually yeah. seen videos of it. But, uh, yeah. no, I agree with that point that Prez made about the coaching adjustments. And people love to say that coaching isn't a big deal in professional sport. These athletes do whatever they want out there. That's complete BS. And, and even in the college hoops level, guys, I'm sure you guys have heard this opinion a lot right now, but why do you guys think so many upsets are happening right now in March Madness? Why do you think, guys? It's because there's no fans screaming their heads off so the coaches can talk to their point guards. The coaches can talk to their point guards and get their plays across, get their defensive schemes across. I have done the play-by-play in a building full of 4,000 people, and it's hard to hear from the coaches talking to the point guards. Imagine being in a building with over you know, 80,000 people. That's why upsets now, don't happen. You know, that that's why it doesn't happen. But anyway, go go ahead, Kyle. Uh, one quick yeah, one quick point, because I, I know I, we don't want to go over our time here. Uh did you guys hear about what happened in the Detroit Nashville game? Apparently, as they went yes. to a commercial break off a penalty, there was a hot mic with the yeah, the referee who basically Did you hear, uh, you hear what happened to him? He's uh, he's done, uh, he got he's fired. fired forever. Forever. Oh, what did he say? I, I know he got there. fired, but what happened, Carm? He, he said, said something along the line. Yeah, it was a makeup call. Yeah, I have to get a call. There was. The, he said there wasn't much there, but I had to get a, an effing call against uh, Nashville or something. So yeah, uh, and gave a penalty. Oh my so. god, that is so unlucky to that ref because I guarantee you that shit is said <laughs> all game. Yeah, of course. Long. There's all always long. makeup calls. I was I was too busy right. binge watching Harvey Specter, so I uh, I right. knew what happened. Let's move I on. missed the highlights. Yeah, Prez, we'll, we'll catch up on suits after the show, but let's get on to the uh, dumper chase segment. This is a game we can be real quick with all three of us: the Flames, the Senators. Uh, guys, if you look at the series history between these two teams, we've been talking about unders all show long. Series history dictates over between these two teams. Series also dictates the past game that we saw was incredibly low scoring. It was 2-1 between these two teams. Just not something you usually see uh, with these two teams. You also saw a rookie goaltender get his first career win. And historically, we don't really see the best performance of a team after that. Um, I believe the Flames are going to win this game. But I also believe this total goes way over. And it's been tough to say that at all over the past couple weeks. 
It's been tough to say that with a six or a six and a half. Uh, I am buying here on the Flames. I think the minus 170 is a cheap price. I remember the, the Prez like four weeks ago said the, the Leafs minus 320 uh, was a cheap price. And I think the Flames here minus 170 is a good price here. I would I would bet this uh, every single time I, I see this. And especially in this situation, to be very clear, with the bounce back. So Flames for me. What about you, Prez? Uh, bro, firstly, I do not think this game is necessarily going to go over the total. Um, I mean, Calgary is really struggling to score right now. Andrew, I'm I'm still trying to figure out. I have a play up for my clients already uh, over at wagertruck.com, and I'm trying to figure out whether to actually include Calgary. Uh, I, you know, here's my bottom line take on this game. Period. Calgary loses this game, they're done. They're out. The they they will not make the playoffs. They will game. not turn their season around. This is literally the biggest game of the, the season for them. They cannot afford to lose this game. I will go out on a limb and say Calgary minus two and a half for one game. Carm? Wow. Okay. Uh, that's uh, quite the take there. I'm not entirely sure that if Calgary loses this game, they're not going to make the playoffs. They'll head home. They'll play Winnipeg for three games, and we'll see what happens. But uh, I think they've been sacrificing since Sutter took over. They've been sacrificing offense for defense. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's just not the, the way this team can play. It's got to be a balance. That was the first start for Gustafson, and we knew that the Senators were probably going to play a very good game for the first, you know, a guy making his first start. Calgary's now seen him. I'm not sure if it's the same as when you see a pitcher for the first time in the second game or second time you, you, you face them, you make your adjustments. But I have to think they're going to get more pucks at Gustafson, uh, more traffic in front of the net, uh, and, and they should win this game. Um, but I I don't think it's a slam dunk, but I, I think the only way to go here is Calgary um, and uh, likely Calgary in the regulation line because you can get a much better price uh, than laying the 170, uh, take the 115, 120 that uh, is, uh, is the line right now and, and take the Flames. Prez mentioned there's been certain situations to look for teams, try and find the bet on spots. Uh, yeah. I believe this is one here for the Flames. And I'm parlaying two-teamer with the Wild and the Flames to get uh, plus 115 uh, outcome in the two-team parlay. Uh, let's move on here to our next segment. It's going to be the barn burner, the Penguins and the Sabres. Go head-to-head -head here. Total is six. And I'm going to segue this to Carm because I know he shares the exact same opinion as me in this one. But we always say it takes two to dance, it takes two to tango. I mean, you can dance by yourself, but uh, that's never that fun. Uh, if you want to bet a total, you want to have another team that's either going to go under with you or over with you. And when you're betting this game's total, you have no idea what you're going to get from Buffalo, but you know what they're going to give up, and they're giving up goals left and right. They're, if you're betting the puck line against them, you've been cashing tickets. If you're betting the team total against them, You've been cashing tickets. So, Carm, my take in this game, get rid of the money line, get rid of the puck line, give me the Penguins team total, and I'm sure you agree with me. Yeah, you know, it's funny that this segment is called the Barn Burner, and we, we're referencing a team from, you know, obviously at, uh, Buffalo here because pretty much everything on the news is something on fire in Buffalo. So there's got to be a, a pun there somewhere. But listen, yeah, team total for me here. Um, the Sabres have allowed four more goals in nine of these 14 losses that they've had. Um, five of five of those seven uh, losses, or seven of those losses were on the road. Five of those, uh, the team scored uh, four or more goals. This team's a complete train wreck. I think the surprise here is Prez, who does power rankings, has the Sabres 31st. Uh, I would actually rank the, uh, the Sabres 32nd behind the Seattle Kraken, who haven't played a game yet. Uh, that's how bad this team is right now. Uh, there's only one way to look at it, and it, it's typical Buffalo Sabers that Linus Ulmark is injured, Carter Hart is their, or sorry, not Carter Hart, Carter Hutton is their backup goalie, and they trade Gustafson to uh, uh, or uh, uh, Johansson to Colorado, and then Hart gets injured, and now they're on their fourth and fifth goalies off the taxi squad. So um, we're going to see both of those goalies, one tonight, one tomorrow. Uh, it, it's not and Eichel's out, so we're not going to get a lot of scoring from the Sabers either. Uh, I'm not sure on the total, to be honest with you, but I think that Pittsburgh does all the scoring here. So 
Give me the team total, three and a half, minus 140. Yeah, I've seen that there's been limited capacity at these games and other teams that are actually cheering, we want Eichel, Prez, because uh, the Sabres are just so bad, they kind of just want to take their players away from them. Yeah, uh, it, on the Jack Eichel, I mean, somebody wrote in the chat room, the Leafs are the most overrated team in hockey. Uh, Jack Eichel is the most overrated hockey player in hockey. Uh, and they could keep him, trade him to the Habs for all I care. Um, we want Taylor Hall, just for the record. And I think there's a chance the Leafs will get him. As for this game, I mean, Andrew, Jesus. I mean, you look at you look at what Buffalo is allowing teams to do. Their last 10 games, five goals, four goals, three goals, six goals, three, five, 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 five. Average teams are averaging close to five goals a game. If Arizona played Buffalo, they would go over their three and a half goals. Uh, I cannot argue with you guys on the over for the team total for Pittsburgh. I can't argue with the over on this entire game. Uh, I I don't even have a problem if you take Pittsburgh minus nine and a half goals. <laughs> Let's lay the field goal here with the Pittsburgh Penguins uh, here back to football season. Yes. Let's do it. No, no touchdowns, um, just, maybe, maybe a field goal. Just for the record, in case uh, nobody knows, Carm gives me a lot of grief for being a Leaf fan. His favorite team are the Sabres. Andrew, what were you about yeah. to say? <laughs> Andrew, Andrew. I, I got to tell you, because uh, we're I, short I tried, on time, Prince, I don't have to I do tried. the best bet one. But this is this is quite possibly the, the, the funniest thing. Okay, so a lot of my friends are Leaf fans. One of my buddies, I, I messaged him. Funny that, you like, live in Toronto. Let's Yes. Listen. I, I, so I said to I said to my friend, I go. Listen. I go. I just heard from one of my sources in Buffalo that that uh, um, uh, Hall is coming to the Toronto. They're just they just got to work out the final figures. He starts posting on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook. All of his friends oh are replying. This is absolutely great. And then he comes to me and says, "Hey, can I quote your source? Like who it is?" And I'm like, "Yeah, his name is Benny. He works at uh, the Olive Garden across from the Galleria Mall." And um, he absolutely lost his shit because he went on uh, this huge rant saying how the Leafs were getting Taylor Hall and they're going to be great and the whole bit. I still think Taylor Hall could come to Toronto if they could dump some salary, but uh, I love getting it over on the Leaf fans. I don't think any of well, these it's all, it's all you got. Players have been good. I don't think any of these Sabres players have been good since they went there. So I, I don't know. Maybe it's where careers go to die. I mean, I saw a clip of somebody saying in the penalty box over to Jeff Skinner. Hey man, you're the most overpaid player in the league. And the guy was laughing at him. Every player has a good year, gets paid a bunch of money and goes to Buffalo and then falls flat on their face. Uh, Taylor Hall is slipping on breakaways on one on O's. I don't know if anybody wants him right now. Um, let's get into some promos okay, guys. Good. And by, by promos, Prez, I, I don't mean any promo codes, just what you have up at wager talk for tonight uh, and your best bet brother. Uh, I've got one play up at Wager Talk tonight. I'm likely going to put a second play in, and uh, so everyone knows it's likely going to be Calgary. So there's an actual <laughs> client play given out on puck time. As for my best bet, it's Calgary. Uh, so there we go. That's it for me. Uh, listen, I really enjoyed uh, being on the show with both of you guys. Um, people, please stay with us. Wager Talk today coming up. Uh, you guys just... So much fun. Go Sabres. I, I look forward to the Wednesday shows, Prez. And uh, sometimes I don't even want to look back at the old shows I used to do back uh, with no fancy green screen, no fancy microphone. Uh, when you brought me on to Wager Talk, uh, it, it's just been an unbelievable experience since then. And uh, just love doing this show. Uh, my best bet is going to be what I mentioned at the, at the uh, couple times during the show, a two-team parlay with the Flames and Wild. I haven't done a... Best bet uh, parlay in a while, and it's two teams that lead to around plus 115 or plus 120. I have a 4% play up tomorrow uh, in soccer. Uh, you can grab that. It's a uh, world international friendly game, actually, and it's a total play. And also I have a third uh, 5% college hoops play up for a sweet 16 action. I've now hit back-to-back -back college hoops 5% plays, looking to make it three in a row. Carm, big day of international soccer. 
Good night here for some bet on spots in hockey. What do you have up at Wager Talk? Yeah, a couple games today uh, in World Cup qualifying uh, in Europe. Uh, those go off at 345. Three games tonight in uh, NHL action, and then a couple games already loaded for tomorrow in uh, World Cup qualifying. The show best bet is going to be uh, what I mentioned uh, in the barn burner. I'm going to go with the Pittsburgh team total over three and a half, minus 140. I usually don't like laying those team totals of minus 140, but this, is, I think, is a really good spot where uh, the Pens really light it up. Uh, 10 of their 12, they have 12 home wins. 10 of those 12 wins at home by four or more goals. Let's make it uh, 11 tonight. Let's make it 11 and let's make it a sweep here, Carm. On the best bets, I have the Flames Wild two team parlay. Carmine with the Penguins team total over three and a half, minus 125. The Prez, Flames, minus one and a half, plus 140. Guys, uh, like Prez alluded to, uh, the, the fact this show has grown the way it really has, we appreciate you guys so much. Uh, a, a big shout out actually goes to the whole crew behind the scenes. You know, three of us are on camera right now. I've got Chris. Our producer, we have Joe, of course. So many great guys behind the scenes that make this show happen. So uh, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, but also a huge thank you to everybody at Wager Talk that uh, helps this show be what it is. Uh, for Carmine, for Prez, have a great day, guys. Best of luck, and we'll see you tomorrow. Buy Dave Koken's MLB World Series pass and get his NHL for free. Dave finished last baseball season ranked number one in total profit. And right now with our early bird pricing, you can get Dave's full season through the World Series for $895. Koken is also currently ranked number one on the ice at Wager Talk, locking Koken's NHL through the Stanley Cup for $459. But for a limited time, by purchasing Dave Koken's early season MLB pass, you will get the rest of Dave's NHL season through the Stanley Cup for free.